Okay. Sailor Moon ran part something or other. I don't know. Eight? Seven? Next on the good side, the last character I'm going to talk about for the good side for now is Luna. The cat. The black cat. Who tells the scouts about their missions and gives them their wands that let them change them into their super sailor forms. Luna has a crescent moon mark on her forehead. But the English actor's name was Jill Frapier, who sounds just like Julie Andrews, better known as Mary Poppins in the Disney film by the same name. Just very British. Um, Jill Frapier never did anything else before or after Sailor Moon. I thoroughly checked it out, which means sitting on Wikipedia for about 10 minutes. Um, makes no sense that Luna is British. Considering her background, but I guess that could be okay. Now I'm going to talk about the bad guy. The first one up here, this guy. I'm not sure if you see my cursor well, but that's Jedite. He was the first uh, bad guy of sale of um, Queen Beryl's men. Um, in Japan, he was a sexist against women. In the English, um... He changed him just to a general uh, rivalry between the Sailor Scouts. He's the lowest ranking general despite he's being, he's older than uh, Zoosite. And mostly his mission was to hunt energy. Yeah, in Sailor Moon, the bad guys steal energy to try to repower Queen Matilia of the, of the Negaverse. Um, or the Dark Kingdom. Uh... He mostly, mostly in his message, he was to hunt energy. He used different disguise to trick people into giving them their energy, and he always attacked large crowds. Um, in an episode entitled Cruise Blues, he uh, used a cruise ship and stole lovers and took them to the middle of the ocean and then saps all their love energy, despite having some people that were on the ship that were not lovers, their energy was not sapped. Uh... Jedi loses a final fight against uh, the Sailor Scouts, uh, Mars, Mercury, and Moon. And Queen Meryl places him in an internal sleep. And what was stupid about it is that Queen Meryl could have just figured out what their true identities were from him because he knew that. And then kill them. I mean, I'm all for killing him because he's evil, but you really didn't have to do that. Kill him because he failed, but first figure out what you want to. The next guy was Nephrite, or Nephrite in Japan. Um, he's the calm, cool, collected one. He's my favorite villain out of every villain in almost any show. He never got really angry. He was driven by to avenge the deaths of Jedi, but he never really got really angry in battle. His uh, He figured out that you can sap more energy. Um... By concentrating on a single human, pulling their energy to its creative peak, and then sapping it. Also, uh, he's the only one, he only had one alter ego or one disguise, who was Master Shingo or Mask Field Stand in the English version. However, he falls in love with Molly, which is Sailor Moon's best friend, and Zoicide kills him. Uh, f um, just after he actually joins the Sailor Scouts as a good guy. So he was like one of the only good villains. So after that fight, Zoicide successed him. Zoicide's a guy in Japan and a girl in English because of the homosexual relationship with uh, Kazuna Knight or Malachite. Um, the, pro the, pr the problem with that, it didn't matter because it, ta it took out all the all the love scenes in the English. So the closest you get to love or sexuality between Zoicite and Malachite is respect. Uh, Zoicite was able to collect all seven silver crystals to make the Imperial Silver Crystal appear or the Ganeshku in Japan. Zoicite is killed by Queen Beryl after harming Prince Edomi or Prince Darien um, even though he's evil and he's on their side at the point. At that point in the uh, series, Malachite or Kazuna Knight. Malachite is practically invincible. He was really hard to damage. 
They could barely hurt him in the beginning. Um, he remains loyal to Queen Beryl even after she kills Zoboscite, um, but resents being forced to work with the brainwashed Prince Darian because he believes it's his fault that Zoboscite is dead. Um, he's killed by the Sailor Scouts after killing all the other Scouts and calls out the Zoboscite when dying. The problem is that I can't figure out why the why none of these guys, nor none of the villains, could figure out who Sailor Moon was. I mean, yeah, Sailor Moon is the easiest person to figure out. I mean, they all have very odd air stuff styles, and no one can figure out who the Sailor Scouts are. I mean, each one of their hairstyle is. Very difficult to mimic. Sailor Moon has blonde hair with two circular balls on the sides of her hair with long pigtails hanging down from them about to her lower, lower thigh area. Um, and, um, and the balls and her pigtails got her the name Meatball Head or Dumpling Head in Japan. Amy, Sailor Mercury, her hairstyle is kind of short, very short, even for a girl. There she is, um, cut just above her ears, and the color of the hair is blue. Um, there we go, Ray. Um, Ray has long, silky, full-bodied black hair hanging down to her. There, um, hanging down to her knees. Mina's hair is similar, but it's blonde. Leech's hair is actually possible to mimic. It's brown and has uh, it's higher up on her head than Amy's, but she has. It held um, in her ponytail with place with a green clip. I know it looks blue on the camera, but it's actually green. Also, all the Sailor Scouts have gemstones mimicking their birthplace. Basically, kinda. I mean, okay, you can't really read that, but Sailor Moon has the gemstone of the diamond, and her element, she doesn't really have one. Um, uh, Mercury has the gemstone of Sapphire, and her element is wind. In the show, it's ice and water, but wind with water is ice. Uh, Venus, Mina, she has a topaz gemstone, and her power is power of the sun, solar power. Mars has a ruby gemstone, and her power is fire. Jupiter has an emerald gemstone and her power is lightning so basically the powers that they have is of is connected to with their birth date so I'm going to go eat now and I'll make another video later see ya